I'm really excited to be speaking to you tonight. And um, I'll try to give you a little flavor of how we work and what are the topics we're interested in. And also, I would like you to be part of a little experiment because I really like looking into your minds. Okay. So, in order to show you how I work, I brought you a little video clip. How do I... Is that? Oh, yeah. It clicks faster than I thought. Okay. Um, so this is a little video clip, actually, from one of the experiments I did. And um, what you will see is we, we have a participant, she's sitting there, and we then, um, the participant is lying down, we put a head coil over the participant's head, and then we um, basically drive the participant or roll her into the scanner, into the brain scanner. And then while this person is lying in the scanner, we can look at their brain function. We can see inside the brain immediately, right? And we can also see how the brain functions. And that's a person lying in the scanner looking at the film. That's pretty fascinating. And um, I don't have a brain scanner to measure each of your brains right now. But what I'd like to do is I brought one of the films that I used for my experiment. And I would like you to look at the film and to really pay attention to your emotions while you look at the film. And after, after you've seen this little video clip, I would like you to tell me how you felt while you saw it. And maybe because we don't have any sophisticated gadgets in order to um, collect your ratings, maybe we can just use our hands and indicate like from zero to 10, how strong your positive and your negative emotions were while you saw this film. So positive, how pleasant did you feel? And negative, how unpleasant did you feel? So this is the little film clip I brought. It's from my experiment. And I will tell you afterwards how your brain probably looked like when you saw this film. Okay, let's go. Oops. Where's the mouse here? Okay. So let me ask you, how strong were your negative emotions? Show me with your hands. Put them up so that everyone can see them. Okay, okay. Look around, look around at what the others say. Okay. I see a lot of fingers. Okay. I see a lot of fingers. I would like to ask you the next question. I saw a lot of fingers for the negative emotions. How strong were your positive emotions? Show me your fingers. Put them up. Uh, there are not so many fingers. Ah, there are some fingers over there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. And this, these were questions that we also asked our participants. So our participants were asked after each film, how strong were your negative emotions? How strong were your positive emotions? We also asked them, how strong was your empathy? And actually, my experiment was not just about looking at these films. My experiment was on how can we train empathy and how can we train compassion. And um, in order to do that, I had a group of relatively young people, maybe like 18 to 35. I measured them before they were trained with this video task. So they looked at these film excerpts that showed people from various countries so that these were news footages. So what we just saw was a, a young person wounded by a, a, an earthquake. And they saw these films before measurement, their brains were scanned, and they gave us our, their responses. And then they did some empathy training. And in a second, I will explain to you how we did this empathy training. And afterwards, we measured their brains again and their feelings again. And then they did a compassion training. And after the compassion training, we measured again how their brain responses changed and how their feelings changed. So how does the training look like? For the empathy training, we did something where... It's pretty close to meditation. So people sit there in silence and they do a lot of mental imagery. And what we ask them to do is to think of themselves in the past and um, think of when they were suffering and to really actually go into that suffering and feel it as if they were experiencing it right now. Empathy is like the sharing of another person's experience and it's the sharing of pain that we trained here in this particular instance. So they sh shared their own past suffering, but they also... 
um, could think of an, another person, like a relative of them who's in hospital and who maybe is suffering because of a broken leg or he had an operation, and to share this person's feeling. So this is what we did with them during the training day. And then they practiced for several days in the evening. They practiced at home. They practiced while they were going to work or to university. And um, they really cultivated this feeling. The second training we did was a compassion training. And the compassion training is also, you do it in silence, and you, you do a lot of imagery and cultivation of feelings. And the compassion training looked like that, that we asked people to remember someone who really did them a lot of good. And I was raised by my grandmother, who's on that picture. And whenever I think of her, my heart just naturally opens. And it's flooded with all this love and this friendliness and this kindness that I experienced. And so this really opens my heart. And then... You can take any other person. You can take the person sitting in front of you and sitting right to you and left to you and feel this and share this feeling with them. So this, this was the way we cultivated compassion. And in, in a little while, we will do, an, we will do our, our own little experiment of how we can cultivate compassion here. But right now, I want to tell you how the brains of our participants looked like when they saw these films and how this brain function changed after empathy training and after compassion training. So this is a neuroscience slide. And um, what we see here is activation in a region that's called anterior insula. It's here. And we see activation in a region that's called anterior middle cingulate cortex. It's right in the middle of the brain and really also in the in the middle of here. And these two regions are active when we, um, when we experience pain ourselves, so when, for instance, we get delivered painful stimuli, but also when we emotionally share the suffering of others. And probably when you just saw this little movie excerpt that I brought to you, your brains had activations in these two regions. They are very active when we share the pain of suffering with other people when we experience pain ourselves. So after empathy training, activation in these regions got even stronger. So pe people who share the pain of others, they showed more activation in these regions and they even increased their negative affect. They increased the, the, the unpleasant experience they had when they saw these films increased. So they went more into the suffering, into their unpleasantness. And this is, can be quite scary because we don't want to be burned out. We don't want to share the suffering of others so much that it hurts ourselves. But what we saw is that when we then train compassion, when we then cultivate these feelings of friendliness, of warmth towards others, we can change that. We can change the way we feel. People afterwards responded like they had a lot of positive emotions in response to the films, and they kept their negative emotions. It's not like they didn't realize that there was something bad going on, but they could feel positive about it as well. And also in the brain, that was mirrored in the brain function, because after compassion training, Activation moved more to the front of the brain, to regions like medial optofrontal cortex, it's called. It's very much here at the front, and it's active when we do things that are pleasurable to us, when we taste something that we really love, like chocolate, or when we see pictures of someone we're romantically in love with, or when we see pictures of our children. So it's really nice that we can shift the brain activation by just a very short-term training. Another region that was activated by compassion training was the ventral striatum, which is also a region that's firing very prominently when it's about reward, when we do things that we like, when we do good things, when we have positive emotions. So it's really nice that our brain is so plastic that even by short-term training, we can change the way we function, we can change the way we feel. So in summary, um, we suggest that Compassion is something different from empathic distress. Compassion is when we can have positive feelings towards the suffering of others. And we also could see in a different experiment that I didn't talk about today in great detail that when we train compassion, we actually can also increase our helping behavior. So we become more pro-social after compassion training. And on the other hand, when we empathize with others and we really share their pain and we don't have this compassion to, to help us, we we can um, experience very strong negative feelings, and all of this is mirrored in the brain function. So the brain is highly plastic, 
and our emotional responses to a situation like a film or even to a real life situation, like when we're faced with the suffering of a friend or with our own suffering, our emotional response to this is not set in stone. We can change it, we can shape it by training. And in a second, we will, we will experience how we can do it ourselves. And in case you're curious about compassion and how it works and the scientific side of it, I, I'll do a little promotion here. We had a workshop on compassion last year in Berlin, and it was really exciting because it brought together scientists, but also people from contemplative traditions, and there will be a book that comes out in February, and it's free. It's online. It's an e-book, so it contains little videos. It contains little texts. It contains little pictures, and you can just download it for free, and this is the website where you can find it. I thank you all for your attention.